Lincoln Patrick preached last night and pronounced the Lord's Supper. And I always like when he preaches because I can usually get some good idea about what the next hour should be about. And as Patrick reflected with us about the coming together of the disciples for the Passover, he reminded us that one of the traditional questions that's always asked in the Passover meal is why is this night different from all other nights? And I started a thought process as I was reading the readings for today, and particularly the Passion Gospel, thinking on the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. And the question came to me, why is this death different from all other deaths? Sometimes when we think about the Passion of Jesus, we focus on the crucifixion and we focus upon the cruelty of it, of the inhumanity of it. How could people do this to a fellow human being? It's one of the worst possible ways to end someone's life. Or sometimes we reflect on the innocence of Jesus. That here was a good, holy man who did so much good for people. He did not deserve to die. And we reflect on how much there is still injustice in our world. How many innocent people die for no fault, for no reason simply because of hatred of someone or because of people just not caring about them. But when we read the Passion story according to John, we see Jesus is not just a passive victim. Jesus comes among us as an agent, as an active person. He's an agent of divine love. And we notice as we read John's Passion Gospel, there's a certain aspect of Jesus that we don't see in the other Gospels, Jesus seems so self-assured. He seems so calm. He seems to know exactly what he's about, what he's doing. And whenever Jesus speaks in the Passion according to John, he speaks with such dignity. I said he was self-assured, but it's not an egotistical sense. It's rather that Jesus is assured of who he is, because he knows he is the beloved one of God. He has come on a mission from the Father to extend God's compassion and mercy into our world. So Jesus knows who he is and what he's here to do. And that's why this death is different from all other deaths. Because this death is bringing love into the world. It's bringing love into places of coldness and darkness. And John's Gospel, as we know when we read it, is full of signs and full of symbolism. And today, as we read of the story of the death of Jesus, John points out to us a, a very interesting sign at the time when Jesus dies. John draws our attention to it, and he says, this is something reliable, this is something witness, and I tell you this so that you can believe. And it's the sign of the flowing of blood and water. Now, I'm no expert in human physiology, but a flow of blood and water to me sounds more like a birth than a death. And truly, Jesus is birthing something new into our world. Jesus is bringing to us a new beginning of love, a new beginning of innocence, and a new arrival of compassion and of mercy. And that's why we say today is Good Friday, because of the great good that begins from the cross. In her visions of Jesus, St. Mark and Mary recounted how the Lord showed her his heart. And he said, see this heart, a heart that loves so much and yet is so little loved. And Jesus went on to say that what hurt him more than all of his physical sufferings on the cross was the indifference and the ingratitude not caring, not appreciating, not being moved at all by his love. And certainly we still find so much of that in our world today. So much indifference, so much lack of caring, people so wrapped up in themselves that they have no heart for others. And it is from this that so much of the cruelty of the hatred of the injustice comes about. This that we hear about in our world day after day. So today, we come as the people of God, the people of Christ, to share in the passion of the Lord. We come to share again that intense, loving desire 
that Jesus has for our friendship. And we ask that he will give us his heart, that we will, will be people like him, people with hearts full of compassion, full of mercy, full of kindness, so that when Jesus, we may bring to birth also a new humanity in ourselves,